So this is going to be a little update on Camels and Friends, a.k.a. Alex Warnock, a.k.a. Julius Robert Oppenheimer. For those of you who don't know who Camels and Friends is, she is a somewhat popular YouTuber who made videos about her animals. Some of the most popular ones were Pancake the Cat, Sugar Tree the Doberman, Baby and Nessie the Camels, and more recently Lauren the so-called Wolf. I've been meaning to get around to making more videos about her for a while now, but never got around to it. I actually made a random video ranting about her a little, and she actually reported that video for bullying and copyright infringement, both of which I do not feel were justified, but that video was removed and I was blocked for posting for three months, which, even though I don't really post here at all and it didn't affect me, I found that pretty annoying. So I've been planning this, planning on saying something for a while, but I never got around to it until now. So I'm just going to say that the purpose of this video is not to bully anyone, but to provide pertinent information on recent events and, and perhaps shed some light. So there was some controversy on her channel a while back about Lorne the wolf and several of her other animals that seemed to have, to have disappeared off her channel with little or no explanation. While I think people have the right to run their channel any way they want and they don't have to discuss the circumstances of their animals' fates because it's a sensitive topic and, and really YouTubers don't owe their viewers anything really. Um, the thing is that Alex, aka Julius, did solicit donations from people who kind of perceive her as an animal rescuer or something like that. So this is why I did feel that she did owe her viewers an explanation. They've, they've donated to her a lot. They've even funded her campaign to purchase another ostrich to be a companion to her other ostrich and, and things like that. So I feel a need to put this out there since it seems that no one else really will. So first, briefly, the situation with Lorne. So June 16th, 2014, she uploaded a video where she announces that her family has bought her what she refers to as a high-content wolf mix, but it's actually a mid-content wolf dog. That's confirmed by people who own his siblings, but anyway, so she calls him a wolf for the rest of her videos from then on, a pure wolf, or so to speak. In this video, she states her intention is to, was to work with Lauren extensively so he can be an animal ambassador. Around that time, she, there were also previous uploads of a mink and two Patagonian cavies that, as far as I know, disappeared later without explanation. She posted many videos about Lauren, many with clickbaity titles, kind of making him out to be some kind of dangerous animal that only she has the expertise to own and, and nobody else can. She, she posts videos saying that wolves are not pets and that no one should own them. And she tries to come off as like she has some type of expertise or that she has like some type of qualifications when she is not licensed or credentialed in any way as far as I know. After numerous videos of Lauren, her video, Girl Survives Wolf Attack, Could You Remain This Calm, caught on camera, was uploaded on April 21st, 2017. This video claimed to show Alex being attacked by Lauren. And here's what she said in the, in the description. Lauren was stung by a fire ant and redirected his aggression at me. He grabbed me by my skull, sunk his teeth into me, and dragged me into a corner. He had a good grip on me and I was bleeding profusely and, of course, in pain. He would have certainly ended my life in a quick second had I not remained calm. So while she tried to paint a narrative of her own bravery and expertise in dealing with this situation, she did receive a lot of criticism, mainly for throwing a rock at Lauren, which even I'll admit is not a huge deal, but she definitely did seem to initiate some type of food aggression response. And I do think the fire ant story is nonsense. I mean, you can hear her say in the video, it's okay, I don't want it, go eat. So I think even she was aware of this and she probably just didn't want to admit that she made a mistake. But anyway, so what happened was that while she claimed that this attack occurred months ago, the near constant videos of Lauren suspiciously stopped appearing soon after that video was uploaded. The last video of him before the attack video was January 30th, 2017. Lauren is featured in exactly one video after that attack video and she kept evading questions about why he wasn't appearing anymore. Then July 16th, 2017, she actually claims in a video that her abusive girlfriend actually killed some of her pets, including the popular Pancake the Cat that helped popularize her channel. This came after she evaded questions about his disappearance for a long time. 
More recently, after mom's love evasiveness, she, she confessed that she rehomed Lauren to Wolf because he wasn't safe around her new roommates. This explanation I find highly suspicious, especially given, given the timing after the attack video. And it's also a really crappy excuse to rehome an animal just because you decided to prioritize some roommates. But anyway, I started noticing a pattern. If an animal inexplicably disappeared off her channel, it was never due to a coincidence or her deciding not to film that animal for a while. Her admitting what allegedly happened to Pancake gives me cause to believe that her evasiveness about an animal's absence is due to some sort of attempt to cover up ne negative circumstances. So this has also occurred with two of her dogs, which after evading questions she claimed were stolen. She still has yet to offer explanations for the disappearances of other animals such as Alistair and the Mink and her Patagonian Cavies and there are others too. So that brings us to the recent events of this year. In February, she made the news because her camels escaped not once, but two times, and she claimed her mother was supposed to be watching them while she was on vacation in the Virgin Islands, and then later when she became ill. At that point, she was being investigated for neglect because the animals on the property had diminished water, but the authorities eventually concluded that the animals on the property were in good health. But in July, she was investigated again because her neighbors haven't seen her for days and the animals didn't have any water. When people offered the animals water, they went for it enthusiastically, they described it. Most shockingly, her horse was emaciated and they said on a scale of 1 to 10, he was a 1, which is the worst score and next to death. The horse and the dog were confiscated and she was cited for animal neglect. And you can see this horse in her videos and she actually even mentions at some point that she thinks the horse is skinny. so. That's a bit strange because it sounds like she had something to do with it, considering that, that the horse recovered when the authorities confiscated it. August 9th, she didn't show up to a court case in regards to the starved horse. So the horse was permanently removed. This horse was putting on weight at the rescue and recovering. Meanwhile, Alex was still evading authorities. She was then stopped for a traffic violation and refused to talk to the officer. She was cited for animal cruelty, criminal damage, and criminal nuisance violations. In October, she pleaded guilty Friday to cruelty to animals and various other counts. She was placed on one year of unsupervised probation and ordered to pay a $300 fine after pleading guilty to two counts of cruelty to animals and one count each of fail failure to provide an animal with potable water, failure, failure to provide medical attention, and cruel neglect or abandonment. So there you have it. While I have no proof of what happened to her other animals, it seems clear that some of her explanations cannot really be trusted. For those individuals that supported her and gave her donations, I think it's important to recognize that just because someone has subscribers on YouTube and claims to rescue animals doesn't make it so. I feel that Alex was a private owner, not a rescue in any form, and given some of the shadiness surrounding her situation, it's unfortunate that those donations she received most likely went towards supporting this final conclusion. There might actually still be some holdouts that believe she is a professional animal handler and rescuer just because they enjoy her videos. I thought I'd make this video to hopefully show them that the undeniable truth staring them in the face, as my concerns about her have been ignored for at least three years, but people seem to finally be catching on after she's pled guilty and her her stories seem to not make sense and continue to to pile up so at this point it seems that she has given away most of her animals so hopefully she doesn't end up back in that situation so watch where your donations are going please consider donating to real rescues and and not people who just ask for them and and have cute animals that's and that's pretty much what I have to say about the situation.